See, he does that every time he shakes my beer up. I did not do that. Do you find yourself not wanting to tackle that honeydew list at home or the dreaded home and business repairs and improvements? Let Jones Empire LLC, which is a locally owned and operated business from Charleston to Huntington, West Virginia. Jones Empire LLC is licensed and insured servicing commercial and residential properties throughout the state of West Virginia. Jones Empire LLC offers junk removal, property cleaning, interior and exterior cleaning, paver, patios, small remodels, tree pruning, tree trimming, tree cutting, tree removal, demolition, tree thinning, stump removal, landscaping, painting and staining, gutter cleaning, pressure washing, and even small remodels. Jones Empire LLC also offers dump trailer services for all your hauling needs. Jones Empire LLC offers free estimates. Schedule your service today. Call or text 304-541-8934. Again, call Jones Empire LLC 304-541-8934. They also offer 24-7 emergency services. Call them today. All right, guys, welcome to another episode of On the Limb Podcast with Nature's Voice Game Calls. Folks, I tell you, Maine and Vermont has some major competition when it comes to making maple syrup. Guys, we are taking a little turn this evening. Hunting and fishing is not going to be the thing this evening. We're going into West Virginia maple. So, West Virginia maple season is in full swing right now. And we have our good friend Paul Ronk with Ronk Family Farms on this evening from Alum Creek, West Virginia. Paul has been operating this maple harvesting processing center conglomerate of all these trees and (laughs) whatever you want to call it. He's been doing that now for the last 10 years on his family farm. So please welcome with me this evening, Paul Ronk with Ronk Family Farms. How you doing, Paul? Hey, I'm doing great. This is exciting to be here with you guys. Yeah, really, I really. told you. I was like, man, we're, we're going to have a good time this evening. Yeah. So, you know, we get together and we, we it's kind of like uh, we want to bring the deer camp, hunting camp experience to people that don't get to experience it. Yeah. And even though we're talking about maple syrup, hey, we, we talk about different stuff like that at deer camp. Well, you know, I said to you earlier, right now... Between now and turkey season, there isn't any hunting. Yeah. So why not tap trees and get out there in the nature and get in the woods, yeah. you know? About the only thing that's going on right now, I believe, is still a little bit of duck hunting. Oh, a little bit of duck. A little bit of duck, a little bit of goose. Yeah. But yeah. other than that, there's not much going on. Trapping yeah. season. I mean, there's oh, yeah, Dan trapping. traps a lot. But trapping. by the way, where's Dan at? Where is Dan? Dan is not sitting in his chair. Oh my god! I just noticed that. I know because you know you know why? Why? Hey, listen, it's quiet. Oh my (laughs) gosh! (laughs) Dan is not here. Dan is not here. Oh man! I tell you, my heart is just—I'm just empty with him not here. (laughs) What a travesty! I tell you. I'm telling you. Anyways, so, Paul, tell us a little bit about the family farm history. Well, back in 1859, my great-great-grandfather came from Lancaster, Pennsylvania with his family in a wagon and came to Whispering Pines in Alum Creek and bought 700 acres for 25 cents an acre. Good Lord. Sign me up for that (laughs) price. Can we go back (laughs) to those days? (laughs) And uh, we're just very, very thankful. We still have 105 acres of that, and uh, that's what I'm maple farming. There's no doubt in my mind that my great-grandfather planted maple trees for harvesting maple also. Back in that day, they they made it into sugar because okay. it would keep for them. Yeah. But I have maple trees this big around, wow. and you know that my grandfather saved those because – our land's also been, the timber's been cut off from it, but not the maple trees. I got you. They're still there. Nice, thankfully. nice. Okay. Thankfully so. Yeah, so they, so they kept yeah. them for a purpose. Yep. Yeah. I have 250 tapped, but I could tap 1,000 
but I can't handle a thousand by myself. You, you barely can handle what you got now. I, mean, I know exactly. I know when we were up there, not to say that in a bad way. I mean, it, it's good that he's overrunning his space and his capacity to do, you know, what, what the family wants to do. But I mean, I think, I think, I just think it's awesome. We were up there during a turkey hunt, uh, Jason Bussey come in from Alabama yeah. and uh, he got a little aggravated at those birds because <laughs> I told him, I said, now, now, Jason, them, them birds are a lot different than them flat landing birds and, yeah. you know, them southern birds. Yes. Yep. I said, these mountain eastern gobblers is, you know, is a lot different here in West Virginia. And he, he's, he's like, man, I tell you, I can't believe them birds. I can't believe they, I just can't believe they beat me. You if, know? if you kill a turkey in West Virginia, you've done something. Yeah, I lived in Wisconsin. I could kill two turkeys with no problem. But, I remember you telling here, us that. Yeah. Oh my goodness, it's a challenge. <laughs> like in Wisconsin, you know, they, they'll basically run up and jump in the back of your truck. No, you that, 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 it's not quite that easy. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, pa- uh, Paul's just gonna flash him a little maple syrup. They'll yeah, just climb yeah, right in. There yeah. you go. <laughs> He he's got the trick on that. Yeah. So let's let's Absolutely. talk a little bit more about that history. So you saying it's a long family history there. So um, Very long. yeah, just keep on going there. Well, then uh, my dad inherited it from his dad, and we were living in Wisconsin, and I got pretty cold there with the wind blowing twenty four seven every oh, day yeah. of the year. And, and, and I loved Wisconsin, other than the wind. I yeah. just couldn't take it. So we moved there on the farm, and it had not had anybody living on it for 100 years. Man. And uh, we picked up and started clearing some land and, and put our home there and put a barn there and lived there for several years before I started mapling, though. Yeah. You know, I I just got the itch. I was helping my friend up in Ohio, and he said, how come you're not doing your own maple trees? I said, well, I can't tell a maple tree by the bark. I can only do it by the leaf. <laughs> <laughs> so I called a forester, and he come and helped me mark some trees. Yeah. And my best friend gave me his evaporator. So I brought it down from Ohio, and I started just under a canvas. Oh, nice. And uh, did, did my first batch in 2015 with buckets. You can't do buckets okay. in West Virginia. Gotcha. We're not flat. We're on mountain. Yep. Yep. So I did it for two years with Bucket and decided I wasn't doing it no more. <laughs> and yeah, then I yeah. learned about three sixteenths line now that you put from tree to tree to tree and then it ends up in one location. Yeah. Now you know? now does that does that move by gravity? Is that is yeah, that kind of what pulls it along? That's exactly okay. it. Okay. So it's, so it kind of starts high yep. and comes down. Yeah. Okay. So, right. all so going gravity. back okay, to what okay. we was talking about before the podcast. <laughs> we we went on that turkey hunt, right? And yeah. And we're going through these different places where he's harvesting these from this trees. And I'm like, you know, they got you got all this clear line running from tree to tree. And it's like you're almost on a compound to where <laughs> you feel like you're not supposed to be there. Yeah, yeah. You're yeah. like, I'm gonna get in trouble. And we're like <laughs> yeah. we're like crawling over these these uh, you know, hoses and crawling uh, army crawling under the hoses and I'm like Shh. This oh is crazy, but it yeah. was it was an awesome. I mean, you got an you got an awesome piece of property up. There. Yes, I do. Very really very good. blessed to have the property that I have, and, and I'm very very thankful for that. Yeah, that's great. So, um, tell us a little bit about the products. We're going to try some of them this evening here on the podcast. Are we? Yes. Yeah. Ooh. Well, yay. <laughs> I have been adding more and more products as we go, and, and I'm getting a little overwhelmed with this, as many as I've added. But yet it's it's so exciting to see new people try it yes. in the product. I have over 20 different products now. Wow. I do them all myself in my kitchen and uh, make them year-round. Uh, our two newest one, about a year old, is our maple barbecue and our maple mustard. Okay. They are fabulous and i've sold over a thousand bottles of them in one year wow in one year so a thousand of each are combined combined okay combined gotcha. and you're doing combined. all that out of your house yes but we're getting ready to build a store wow nice across the road this okay. summer a 30 by 50 and it will be open six days a week for people to come and get 
all these products. Oh man, I really want to try that mustard. That'll be great. I got to be honest because I, I love those, mustard. I got spoons here. So he's got know. spoons, Mike. <laughs> And do, Foods, I mean, you're going to make me sit no, here and look here, at this. For come like, here. You want to try that mustard? We don't let here Dave do very much on the podcast. No. but There you go. Oh. Yeah, so, you, have you tried the I, do the, I haven't tried the I got to do this like a tasting. You you go. know, I you didn't gotta, know if you tried the mustard or not. Oh, my gosh. That smells amazing. It is amazing. Oh, my goodness. <sighs> you got to I mean, do like the whole tasting we're thing. Sorry, we're sorry, guys. You yeah, sorry, everybody. Sorry that you can't. Oh, my gosh. You know what that's good on? I would put that on anything. Pizza. I, put pizza? that on your pizza. Oh, oh I man. Can, I can tell that would be good oh, on pizza. Man. I think yeah. it would be good on salad. You know what it reminds oh, me yeah, of? If, I do have guys that buy it just for salads. Put it on their salads. Oh, my gosh. You know about everything with it. Anything and it's it, it, it's um, it's almost like a step up from like honey. Because I like honey mustard on salad sometimes. Yes. Mm-hmm. But this is like a higher level. Then. So so we were introduced to Paul through uh, Laurel Fork Farms and Outdoors, James Ross and Carrie, at one of the first shows that we'd done. Was it in Charleston? It was in Charleston three years ago. Three years ago. So it yeah, was it in was, Charleston, right? and he was right across from us. And, you know, we have that little area there at the hunting and fishing show. We kind of just drive business to each other and, you know, hey, they got some great stuff over here. Or, you know, you need to go over here and check them out. And yeah. He brought mm. some cotton candy, maple cotton candy. Never heard of it. Made out of real maple sugar. This is, this is. is something that you can't find at any carnival, in my opinion. I don't know. I've never had it until I had it with you. I, I was going to say, I've never heard of it. Make your tongue slap your brains out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> oh, man. And, I, and when I tried that, I was like, I've got to try this syrup. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I, don't, I don't like high fructose corn syrup and stuff like that. Uh-huh. I'm not too big on that stuff. Yes. The the GMO kind of stuff. Yeah, I don't like it processed But stuff. the maple syrup. Yeah. Is, it's See, that's why I like maple syrup because it's not processed like the... No. It's you know, organic. It's yeah. organic. 100% yeah. organic. Yeah, absolutely. It takes 80 gallons of sap. To make one gallon of syrup. Oh my gosh! So, what? so you boil <laughs> off a lot of that. Uh, you evaporate that water off of yeah. that, uh, okay? So that you get it down to sixty-six yeah. percent sugar is in a gallon okay. of maple syrup. Wow! Okay. And the rest of it is water. All right, what's next? Feed me more. Okay, do you guys like coffee? <laughs> yeah. Are you guys coffee drinkers? I'm a coffee I love drinker. Coffee. Well, I'll tell you what. This is good on ice cream, vanilla oh ice cream. Holy Unbelievable. I sell a lot of this. It's infused maple coffee. Oh, my goodness. Infused maple <laughs> coffee. If, if you all hear a lot of... Uh, yeah. Yeah, we're, just, we're, we're trying to take it in uh, and just, and just really it experience it. Yeah. Everybody listening to this on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, they're going to be like, oh, my God, I'm there. You guys are. This is what makes me excited. Is my customers that just love the product. Here, okay, here's the thing. Here's the thing. My reactions. <laughs> th- this is real. That stuff is amazing. The mustard was amazing. I'm just. It wasn't. Is it the best you've ever had? <laughs> I can't think of any thing coffee flavored that I've ever had that tasted that good. So get going. And that's the truth. I, I I think you could probably put that in like a like a iced coffee or something. Oh yeah, that that tastes exactly like yeah. an iced coffee that you would get somewhere that already has caramel in it. Yeah, yeah, but better. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, now the barbecue. Oh my gosh, he's going to maple barbecue. Gonna... This is fifty percent maple. Man, man Dan, I wish you could be here. Fifty percent my barbecue. <laughs> I'm really glad Dan's not here tonight. <laughs> You know why? Because you wouldn't get a taste of it before him. I know. <laughs> he'd be sticking his spoon he'd, in front he'd of He'd yours. probably ate half of it before we got started. Yep. Whoa. Whoa. Now that... Oh my gosh. If, man, I'm I have, serious. I have if you take a pork, pork loring and baste this with it and smoke it... Mm, Mm-hmm. I think Mike said he was going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> like, shortly. Yeah, shortly. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Wow. So, so, okay. Sorry, I was kind of in and out with working with stuff. Dan, so, Dan's on here. You can talk. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so my question is, 
until your store gets up and going, you may have already said this, but how available are these products right now? Like they're not as available as I'd like for them to be. And okay. if anybody's watching a broadcast, I do sell wholesale also okay. to stores. Yes. But, um, okay. uh, I'm trying to think. I just want to know because like, take, I, like I want, I want it. <laughs> like I want to get me some of this stuff. Putnam, um, I think hers is called Putnam coffee. Okay. It's in Taze Valley. Okay. Yeah. It's, uh, she sells all my products there. Is that okay. in the chamber of commerce building? Yes. Okay. I know what That's you're talking it. about. Okay. Yes. yes. We know exactly where it's at. Absolutely. She sells all my products there. And that's okay. one of the greatest places. She's super cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. And, but they can call me. Yeah. You can call me, and I will meet you anywhere for okay. my product so okay. that you can get it. And I do that quite often. Yeah. Okay. You know. Cool. Um, my number is three zero four five four seven. Five four five seven zero six six. I know it's. it's you like, guys got me nervous. Oh, <laughs> don't be nervous. Then, hey, I, you have nothing to be nervous about. If somebody was to ask me my cell phone number, I probably wouldn't know it either because I don't call myself. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. true. I don't you know that's what I true. Mean? Well, and you know, I had the same cell phone. Listen to this. This, this is a crazy story. I had the same cell phone number from when I started college in nineteen ninety eight. Yeah. Wow. Until two years ago, you, they same cell phone number. They wouldn't let you transfer it over. No, oh no 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 no! I added a li- I had I wanted oh. to add a line because I wanted a new phone gotcha. and I wanted it for free and I was like, how, how can I get a free phone? And he's like, I can give you a brand new number and I can give you a brand new phone for free. I was like, oh. okay, I'll do that. <laughs> not think you know, so not you, think it's so gonna you, be that big a deal. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Hey, of- some of my newest things is nuts, glazed maple nuts, and I brought the pecans for you to try. Oh my god. Pecans are huge here in West Virginia. Woo, uh, you love you, them. Show show the camera one of those. Oh That's, my gosh! Holy moly! Um, yeah, I'm going to show this to you, but it's going to be gone shortly. Oh oh, give them back. We're going to leave them over. Here. <laughs> you can keep them. Keep them over there, Mike. Oh my goodness! <laughs> I do uh, walnuts, Dan. Pecans. Um, oh my goodness! Cashews, cashews. <laughs> Yeah, you're so my wife says I don't say pecans right, but that's the way. People well, say, people that's say the way we say way. it in Ohio. Yeah, man. I've heard pecans. <laughs> people heard... say pecans, pecans, <laughs> pecans. Yeah, pecans. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Who knows? All we know that it's really good and it's nut. I say <laughs> say it however you want to say it. Well, yeah. you know, I want to I want to jump in here before <clears throat> I forget this. West Virginia has a million maple trees, guys. Over a million maple trees, West Virginia. And 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 and, and you're not talking about like on farms. You're talking about in the state. In the state, just like woods we have or over anywhere. a million maple trees. Okay. In Vermont, where you think of maple syrup, mm-hmm. they only have five hundred thousand. We have double the amount of maple trees that Vermont has. Wow. We should be the largest state for maple syrup. Let me tell you something else. So there's a lot of business opportunity out oh there, really. Goodness. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. It's okay. unlimited. Sorry to interrupt you, but unlimited. I just wanted to, yeah. The glacier, the glacier went through the north, but the glacier didn't come through West Virginia. Okay. You know what that means? It didn't strip the soil and the minerals. We literally have more minerals and vitamins in our syrup in West Virginia than any place else in the world. Wow. That is the honest truth. Uh, Japan... Would love to have our syrup, but we don't have mm. enough to to ship to them. Exactly yeah. right. Know, we sell it locally, you know. But if and, we tapped into that, pun intended, if we tapped into that resource, yeah. Oh my! I mean, well, with, that's a huge. With you talking about that, think about all the landowners that could be seriously making. Yes, you're the president of the West Virginia Maple Syrup Producers Association, correct? Yes, sir. I am. So you guys are looking for producers. Yes, every day, every day, because I mean, there's no competition here. Yeah, we have over sixty commercial producers for a million trees. Now, come on, there's money there. <laughs> there's money there. Yeah. And uh, yeah. people needs to, to to tap into that. Absolutely, uh, yes. If, if for, you're for, listening and you're in West Virginia, or you know, um, you, you need to get in 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 contact with Paul. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. And if you've got maple trees on your property, because you because you, you could even 
you could even coach someone on how to get started. Oh, absolutely. Like if they've got maple trees on their on their land. I mean, yes. think about all the landowners that could really be like um, creating a creating wealth for their families. Yes. You know, creating well, a business. You know, West Virginia, yeah. all of our young people are leaving yeah. because the pay for mm-hmm. jobs. Mm-hmm. I keep encouraging them and say, hey, get you a decent job here and do maple syrup. Yeah. You, you don't even have to own the land. Find people that has land and ask them if you can tap their trees. They don't care. Yeah, absolutely. Well, they don't care. Most of the time you pay a dollar a tree is okay. what you pay to rent it. Oh, so, and, uh, so it's like a lease. Kind of like a lease, yeah. yeah. So I'm really trying to encourage young people to stick around in West Virginia. We yes. need them to stay here. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. To help this state. Yes. Very much so. Yeah. Yeah. Cultivating and harvesting and just, you know, living like this is is, a, is starting to be a thing of the past, though. I don't and it And I like that you're trying to continue that, just like we try to continue the hunting heritage with our youth. Yeah. Right. You know, that's a, that's a big thing. Yes, yeah. I love I love the heritage that we have in hunting. I love the heritage that we have in farming and cultivating our own foods on our own property and things like that. Yep. So, so what? So what's next to try? Oh yeah, my spoons. You right have here. something else for us? Uh, yes, I do. How <laughs> okay. About... Now, I, I, and I have a I have a bone to pick with you. Oh God. Okay. Why did you not bring some like chicken? We could like throw this <laughs> stuff on. Or some ribs. Well, today's Tuesday. It's Taco Tuesday. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, some of this stuff will be good on tacos, man. Here, I guarantee it. Here's yeah. cinnamon. You're not allergic to cinnamon, are no, you? No, sir. Okay. I, I'm not allergic to any kind of this food. This is infused. <laughs> yeah. I think the food's allergic to me. Yeah. Maple infused cinnamon. Oh, you smell that? Oh, wait a minute. I've had this one. Yep. This is one of my favorite ones. I think, this I is, think you have. This is the one now, that's got the cinnamon stick in it. In yep. the yes. 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 Now, see, that's what I was going to say. That smells like a straight cinnamon stick, and I'm <laughs> spilling it on myself. That's, that's that's terrible. I just wasted some on my jeans. No, literally, that's my favorite one that yeah. I've tasted from yours. It is a good one. I've never tasted anything like that. Oh, man. I'm that's so, what I'm saying. And I'll tell you another special one. I, wow, I will here. dip my sausage in that. Yeah. I, hear I don't. You. I don't know. <laughs> no, no, not my sausage links that I ate for breakfast. Okay? I understand. Yeah, just, just to clarify. No, I understood there. what you meant. I Thank just, God, Dan is not here. <laughs> oh, I know. Dan would have made something out of that. Of course, I don't I guess, think you can buy this anywhere else in West Virginia. Yeah. I make maple apple butter in a seventy. You've got to be kidding in me. A seventy gallon <laughs> copper kittle. Yeah, for fourteen hours. We and you stir got the that. big like wooden like yes yeah. yeah. The wooden paddle. And, and I put maple in it yes. instead so, of cinnamon. So you're talking okay. about this. Do y'all remember back in the day when they used to have heritage days in the schools? Do you remember? What is it? Remember, <laughs> remember when they used to have heritage days at the schools when yeah. you were in school? Yes. And they would do the maple butter yes. or, or the, the apple butter. Apple butter. And, and then they uh, would have the blacksmith there. And molasses. They would do molasses and apple and butter. They would do molasses. Yeah. And they would mm-hmm. take you around to these different stations. Yep. That's one of the reasons why these things are falling by the wayside. Listen, they they don't. Uh, I have I have my own opinion on why that I is. Let's just. I, I think it's designed that way. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I really think that's it's designed to tear down. That's why there has to heritage. be more people like us. <laughs> well, you know, one legacy I want to leave is to my grandkids. I'm gonna yes, fall, I'm gonna fall on the floor because <laughs> I, I mean I hope I'm wrong that. We're going to get in a bad way where we have to go back and resort back to growing your own yes. or you're not going to survive. Absolutely. And I hope I to set it's... my farm up for yep. my grandkids that they can come to the farm and they can make it. That's awesome. I do. That is awesome. Well, just like your family set it up for you. Yep, exactly. You had to figure exactly. that out and, and you know, know that that's really what they put oh, it there for. That right. smells so good. That's what See, they, I love apple butter. That's what they done it for. They done it mm-hmm. for you to continue that lineage. I, I, I really believe so. Yeah, I think so, too. I do. It wouldn't be this good if it wasn't meant to be. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Well, thank you, guys. That's amazing. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you. Now, now listen, I, I am an apple butter connoisseur because... When I, where I grew up in Jackson County, there was a Lions Club at the end of my road. And, you know, I'm talking, when I say the end of my road, quarter mile from my house. So I would ride my bike out there every time they'd have the fall festival out there. Mm-hmm. And they made apple butter for ye- I'm I'm talking, they probably did it for 60 years out there. So they had it down. Mm. 
Does that make sense? So are these? Are this these, is amazing. Are these apples? amazing? That are apple they, butter. What, what kind of apples are these? <laughs> it's uh, applesauce from Sam's. Okay. Okay. Ooh, that's the best applesauce. <laughs> it really is. It's for store bought. Put that in there, and you cook it down. Okay. And then you add the maple to it. Okay. okay. Instead of the. Uh, White sugar, you put the maple sugar you in. You substitute mm. the sugar yes. for the maple. Mm. And you put the maple in it, mm. and that's what you get. Mm. Wow. Wow. There, you know what you need? This is just me talking. To me? No, 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 to him. I, I, man, we should get him paired up with, like, an apple company or something that, that like, that like has an apple orchard. And they could do, like, the apple, like, like the app. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, the homemade applesauce. But I think then you would just you would die of pleasure eating it. <laughs> I, I, I'm telling you, that was amazing. This was close to it. I mean, that was amazing. I, I'm, I'm not even. Pl- I, I don't know, man. That's just. It's like everything is super, the, super good. The day that we make it, my wife makes biscuits, and, and at the end, when we're we're finished bottling oh. and everything, we take the biscuits and <laughs> roll it around and everything. Oh, yeah. oh man! Oh, I bet, I bet, Talk I bet. About good. Oh, Let like me know that the next so day that you're getting ready to finish up that. Okay, I will be there. Okay, mm. good. Hey, here's some. Just maple oh, we got syrup. something else. Just right. Organic maple syrup. Just regular maple syrup. You got. Oh you got to try the regular stuff. Goodness gracious! Now, see, this is my jam. I love this stuff. Yeah, see, I've, I've had this and I've had this, the cinnamon. That's those were my favorites. I mean, I just you know, just for everybody to know, you never add anything to this. This is pure. It's out of the tree sap, cooked down into maple. We add absolutely nothing to it. It's 100% organic. 100%. I'm off to stop. Now, one thing that I did that not so know, good. because I really didn't know that West Virginia had this surplus of maple. So I've gotten my maple syrup from Maine and Vermont. Mm-hmm. Um, we know a couple people in Maine that, that harvest uh, a good bit of maple syrup, and they sent me some. And I was asking... I was asking Paul one time. I was like, you know, I know that it, once that stuff sets for a while, yes, in your refrigerator or okay. something, it will get some mold on top of it. Okay, okay, within the bottle. Okay, so you just you not just, if it's in the refrigerator, it will not. Okay, if so you if put it's it setting. in there, right? If it's setting out, okay, it will. Okay. Like like yeah. like in your cabinet. Once or something. you open up my bottles, because it don't have kind. to be refrigerated, right? No, not not until you open it. Okay. But when you open it, you need to put it in the refrigerator, or if you don't have room in the refrigerator, in the freezer. Okay. Maple syrup does not freeze. Oh. I didn't oh, know. that's a game changer. It does not freeze. <laughs> and let me that's tell you something changer. else. <clears throat> it will keep forever in a bottle if it's not open. I have the oldest bottle in the world of maple syrup made in 1859 in Lincoln County. That really? is no joke. And I had a scientist come last year, put a needle down through it, drew it out, and it was perfectly fine. 1859. Holy. <laughs> that is no that, joke. That is nuts. That's no yeah, joke. for real. Was that in one of the, the uh, cellars or something on your family's property? Or? Actually, a gentleman just stopped at the gas station up the road and said, will you see that Paul Rock gets this bottle? And he called me and he said, Paul, I got something here for you. I said, well, I'll be up to come. He said, no, you need to come now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it still had part of the label on there where you could read 1859. Oh, and my. And I mean, goodness. it's amazing. The old thick bottle, yep. the old glass uh-huh. with the cork in it and everything. Oh, my so goodness. It was, it's was amazing. It amber? Is it an amber bottle or is it white, like clear? It's clear okay. with the syrup. Yep. I put it on display when I have uh, when I have my open house. Yeah, which you know I don't want this to be the end, but I did want to mention on the seventeenth of February. Yes, we didn't talk about that. Seventeenth of February. Seventeenth of February. Third Saturday in February. Everybody is invited to my farm. Not only will you learn how to tap a tree and see the evaporator working and me making maple syrup and explaining to you the process. You can get a free breakfast. All the pancakes you want to eat with my maple syrup and maple sausage. Oh, my God. Holy. Maple sausage. Okay, all right. 
Yeah. Mark it on your calendars, folks. Yep. Mal, if you're if you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> she better be listening. <laughs> but oh, uh, <laughs> that's great. That's great. That's great. Oh my goodness. Well, Dan's not here to do our salute. You want me to do it? So I don't have a salute. Where we get our salutes from, I couldn't get a hold of Kate. Hmm. So if you want to just continue to ask some questions to Mr. Ronk, I will get us a salute. Yeah, do we have any comments there? Uh, uh, Paul, do you have uh, anybody in your family that has served in the military? We can have you do the salute this evening. Well, my stepmother served in the military. Okay. Uh, for several years on a base in California. Okay. So just um, tell us a little bit about that. So our salute to Valor this evening <laughs> will be brought to you by Mr. Ronk. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, I mean, when she buried uh, her her name, maiden name was Farrell. Okay. Bonnie Farrell. She was married to my dad for 39 years. She died of breast cancer. Wow. But uh, she that. served in the military. You know, back in that day, it was really something for a woman to serve in the military. Oh, yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty cool. And uh, the military put a nice stone on her grave and everything. And it just it was just really cool to know that women are involved in military, too. We always yeah. think of men. Yeah. But, what, uh, what branch was she in? I think it was the Army. I'm almost positive it was the Army. But okay. I, I don't remember exactly, but I believe it was the Army. Okay, and do you know how long she served? I think four years. Four years. She served four years. You know about any tours that she done? When no, she was, I don't. When she was we, in, we didn't ask her any of this. Yeah, <laughs> and we didn't even find out a lot of this until after she was gone. Yeah, she never, so a lot she of people never talked don't, about it. You know, there's the veterans. A lot of people, a lot of veterans don't like to discuss or talk about it because they don't do it for the. No, they don't do it for that. That's right. You know, they do it because they see that it's a service. Right. Yeah, well, for. it is. Uh, we have our freedom because yeah. of it. Yep. And, Absolutely. Uh, that's one of the least things that we can do. You know, I say it a lot, but, you know, we b- wouldn't be able to do what we're doing today if it wasn't for them serving and, no. you know, defending our freedoms that we have and enjoy every day. So. That's right. Yep. That's okay. <clears throat> Thank you, Miss Farrell, for your service. Yes. That may have been, well, that's maybe the second woman that we've had that's been in service. I think second, yeah. 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 Mm. So, well, Jason Lucas says slap some of that maple barbecue on some ribs, and I'm asking Jason to bring us some ribs. We can slap that yeah. barbecue. On. Bring us some ribs, Jason. <laughs> we'll slap her on there, bud. Yeah, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love that. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> oh, well, Paul, it's been a pleasure having you on this evening. Yes, it has. Is there anything else that you would well, no, like wait a to second. discuss? Oh, the we process. Do something else. We want to do the process. Let him do the process, and then you can do your thing. Oh, no, is that I, what you want? Do you yep, want to? Yep, okay. I about forgot about it. I'm glad right. that you okay, mentioned yeah, it. Yeah, the process. So let's, let's talk about the process a little bit. Well, I mentioned earlier, you, you can't hardly do buckets in West Virginia. And if you got just two or three around your house, that's great, and that's what you want to do. But when you're doing it 250 trees, it's impossible to do buckets in West Virginia when you got mountains like this. So I have lines three sixteenths, and it's gravity. It pulls by gravity as it goes downhill, and it actually pulls the sap out of the trees. There's so much gravity on. Oh wow! It. Like as a like a you, vacuum kind. Yeah, of. as yeah. long as you have a twenty five foot drop. Okay. And and I have all my trees tied together with over a mile of line. Okay. <sighs> and it goes down to a three hundred and fifty gallon tank, and then I pump that up to my sugar shack. Okay. When I get it up to my sugar shack, I run it through an RO, a reverse osmosis. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of new to the industry all over the world within the last 12 years. Okay. And what they do, it runs it through that and it takes out half the water. So it saves you a lot of cooking time. A lot of cooking time. That's that's the neat thing about it. Absolutely. But that water also is organic. I'm going to start bottling that water. Oh my selling gosh! Because yeah. where where can you get organic water? I mean, literally <laughs> organic. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, that's almost like yes. coconut water. <laughs> I mean, that that yeah. would be that would be like coconut yeah, water. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, just just amazing. I I want to start doing that. Yeah. I'd have a lot of ideals. My wife says I need to slow down a little bit, but uh, you get me talking about maples, I'll never shut up. But then I put it in my evaporator and I start cooking it. Mm. In your evaporator, literally, that's what it does. It evaporates that water off of there. Okay. 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 Yes. And I can do about forty gallons an hour. Okay. On my maple. On my evaporator. And my pan is only six foot long and two foot wide. It's not a big pan. I don't have a big commercial evaporator or anything like that. Yes. And then it goes through kind of like a maze. Yeah, right. Okay? Right, right, right. And when it gets to that end of the maze, you Almost check. like molasses, though. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You check it with a hydrometer. Okay. 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 You check it with that. And when it yep. reads just right on that hydrometer, you pull it off. Okay. And at that point, it's sixty six percent sugar, mm. and the rest is water. Okay, and that's exactly what it has to be. Our syrup is actually tested by the West Virginia Department of Agriculture to make sure that it's sixty six percent. So we're not cheating anybody. I got you. Okay. As a matter of fact, as many people as they've tested in West Virginia, honest truth, no one's ever. Oh, that's done, great. Done wrong. That's great. Never, that's great. Never. That, oh, way, that, that way you're not getting watered down syrup. That's right. You're yeah. not getting watered down syrup. Yeah. You could taste watered down syrup anyway if you. Oh, I guarantee you. That, that's the real deal, my friend. That's that is, the real deal. That is the real deal. But you, you know what is my favorite thing that we tested tonight, that we taste coffee. tested? Huh? The coffee? I love the coffee. Oh, okay. I, have, I have top the three. The mustard. Let me tell you the top three. The top three is coffee's number three. Cinnamon's number one. Nope. Oh, God. It nope. Is Cinnamon's not ranked in my top three. The coffee's number three. Okay. The apple butter is number two. Oh. And the mustard is number one. I, I'm telling you. The mustard. That mustard is ridiculous. Yeah. It's amazing. I, it, made, I made 38 bottles of it today. Oh, I've been my doing all gosh. Day. <laughs> you did that for me. Uh Yep. As a matter of fact, <laughs> since you liked it so much, Dave, this bottle's for you. Oh my there gosh. You know. That one's for you. Uh <laughs> what what's that commercial that just brought to come to my head? This this is for you or something like that. What was it? Used to be an old commercial that was out. I don't know. Um uh, I can't remember now, but, but it just, the, the you know, the the color of that bottle just it, it's it's what you know, it's it's worth its weight in gold. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, the golden bottle. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. That's awesome, you man. Made oh, my game, gosh. Paul. You have no idea. Because I'm a foodie. I got to be honest. I am too, man. I think it's a new phrase, right? Isn't that the, or maybe it's not new. I'm kind of, you know, I'm, I like behind on that stuff. But well, uh, I love food. I love food. And uh, I do too. a little too much, probably. On, on the 17th, if food. you come to the farm, all these products will be available. Mm. You know, food brings all people together. Food is a great, you know, you know, food, once, once I figured out, once I figured this out, and hopefully my kids aren't, well, I guess it doesn't matter. <laughs> once I figured out that I could use meals to get my kids with me in the same room mm. on a consistent basis, it was it's a huge game changer. Well, you know, in this when you can have family meals in this day and time, getting your kids off the games and the phones and all the electronics and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, you know, I was raised on Sunday dinners. Yeah, I was raised on eating dinner with family. Absolutely, yes. So me and my wife has stuck, and to you it. still do that. We still do it. Yeah, that's, that's one of the things. And you do my Sunday wife, meal. My wife even what time? Said, what time on Sunday? <laughs> Are you bringing the sauces? It's usually, it's I'm usually bringing after. The sauces. Yeah, <laughs> he's bringing the sauces. So it's usually around uh, twelve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, okay. Right, right after church. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Usually yeah. around twelve o'clock. That's right. That's Sometimes right. if church runs over, we may go into one. Yeah, you know? yeah, I mean, yeah. You kind of gotta, you know, but you know, leave it open. You know, you really have to make it a point in this day and time. That you are not going to come off that thing. Oh, yeah, because that's what my wife said. She was like, I don't care what you all are doing when you're out of the house, talking to my kids. Yes. You all will be back to eat dinner with us on Sunday. Mm. <laughs> and, and you have got to stick to because it, Because we want them it's to so easy to let it go in their families that's as well. Right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I grew up in a close-knit family. Yeah. You know, I mean, there was 16 years between me and my brother. There was 12 years between me and my sister. But we were all close, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I tell you, I, I tell you something. Um, so. I tell you something else, and then and then we'll we'll get into the verse of the day. Okay. 
that's that, that that's one thing, Paul, that we do on every episode. We try well, we try to do every episode is a verse of the day. Oh, cool. And we just kind of talk about, you know, what the Lord's what we feel the Lord's saying. And um you know Yeah, because you one know, of the things yeah. You know, we uh you you are everybody always says you're closer to God when you're in the woods. And, you know, this is primarily outdoor podcast, but we base it on God, family, country, and everything outdoors. Yeah. So um, we try to hit on a little bit of each one of those segments. You know, our country is uh, is uh, our salute to valor. Mm-hmm. You know, we put out uh, that for them and our soldiers that serve for us. Um, a country uh, also involves the legislative process behind the hunting and the outdoors. Okay. You know, a lot of people yeah. don't see – the backside, the back end of those things that goes on behind yeah. the scenes. Yeah. And uh, they're out there fighting and lobbying for us to enjoy the outdoors and to yes. be able to have and harvest these animals. Because if you just yeah. let people go and do what they want to do, you're not going to have nothing to harvest. No, yeah. Right. You're not going to have trout to fish and yeah. you're not going to have different things to hunt and right, turkey right. and deer and yeah. bear and yes. stuff like that. So. Conservation's you know, a big deal. It is. You know, it it, it really is. Conser- you know, we all should be have that conservationist uh, spirit about us. Yes. Mm-hmm. If you're an outdoorsman, in my opinion. Right. Yes, absolutely. So, absolutely. All right, go ahead. So That's great. Well, you know, and, and, and honestly, I think the reason that is, Mike, I think the reason we feel so much closer to God when we're outdoors is because, you know, the Bible says that the creation testifies of his existence. Yeah. Yeah. So when you're out there in his creation, I mean, how, how can you look at a tree and think, you know, that just happened? Yeah. This maple tree just happened. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, what? What? okay, you, you could maybe say that when Darwin was around, but now that we know that DNA is actually more complex than any computer code ever written. So you, your DNA actually tells your protein in your body what, what cells to create. It's the reason you have two ears and not three ears, and they're in the right position. And the same proteins that created your ears created your nose, but what tells them what to create? The DNA. It's computer code is what it is. It's it's coded by a coder. Yeah. Does that make sense? There has to have. There has to be a coder. There has to be. <laughs> there's got to be a creator. There has to be a creator. It doesn't make any sense. And and we've talked about this before. But anyway, but the creation, he says, testifies of me. And that's why I think when you're out there, man, those trees, mm-hmm. uh, that grass, you know, those I, mountains. I preach Sunday morning, and one thing that I said in my sermon to the congregation was, I love being out in the woods by myself because I can pray out loud. Oh, that's the greatest. And yeah. while I'm praying yeah, yeah. out loud and yeah. your eyes are open and you're looking at God's creation and his beauty and his awesomeness. Absolutely. Wow. Wow. There's just nothing like it. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Wow. wow. Okay, so well, this was, is, you know, oh, you talk about praying. I'm sorry. No, no, go you ahead. You talk about praying that's out great. loud. I was helping my wife cook dinner this evening. And, you know, I, I kind of don't do that in front of people much, you know. Like, I try to want it to be my thing between me and God. It's not something that I'm, you know, I don't know. It's not that I'm ashamed of it or anything. Yeah. But what I'm saying is it's it's that relationship that I have one-on-one with him. Yes. I don't want that to be interrupted. Right. Okay. You, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, I do. Yeah. So that's yeah. kind of the way I look at it. So yeah. my wife walked out of the room. We were, we were in the kitchen cooking, and I was just thanking God for all the blessings. You know, there's a lot of times that I'll just thank God for what's going on in your life. You know, mm-hmm. you may be going through mm-hmm. bad things, but you still need to be thankful in all things. Absolutely. Amen. Yes. Even when you're going through those trials and troubles. Yes. And and s- something I'll say about what you just said, because a lot of people think that, you know, well, if you if you don't, you know, pray out loud in front of people, you know, then you're ashamed of it. No, I I, I think of it as as actually the opposite because it's a reverence in my opinion. What he said was, you know, he he said there are two people that that, that are praying. You got a man over here that that is saying, "Oh, I'm I'm such an awesome Pharisee. <laughs> look at me. Look yeah. how great I am." And then you got a guy over here who beat his beat his chest and. It was humble about his prayers and didn't, you know, do it out. And who went away justified? The man who wasn't trying to be a showboat about it. That's right. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then the other thing, too, is 
your relationship with Rachel, my relationship with Mallory, right? Is it is it more intimate and more beautiful when you show love out in front of everybody, out in the middle of public, or if it's one on one? You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. Like, and 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 you know that's that's another reason why the Bible, you know, kind of. Uh, um, puts it into a perspective of husband and wife. Yes. Like he's yeah. the husbandman. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. And we're the bride. And we're the bride. Yeah. That's right. You know That's what I mean? good. I just, good stuff, bro. Mm-hmm. I love it. I love it too. <laughs> All right, I'm going to read this scripture. Okay? So this is out of the Passion Translation. And, you know, okay, I just want to say this. I just want to say this. <laughs> because I love King James version, yeah. and I love digging into it and getting in the concordances and pulling out the meanings of words and stuff. And the only reason why I use different translations, and I really like this one, is because, like, if I'm reading a book, let's just say any book, if I'm reading a book, I I like language. Yeah. I like I like it when, you know, someone just doesn't say, there's a wall there, but someone says, you know, it's a brown wall, it's got wood grain looking in it, it's, does that make sense what I'm saying? Yep. So that's why I like different translations, just because it, it brings my imagination alive of what they're talking about. Does that make sense? It's nothing, you know. Anyway. All right. So he says, this is Romans 5, 1, out of the Passion. Our faith in Jesus, (laughs) our faith in Jesus transfers God's righteousness to us, and he now declares us flawless in his eyes. Now this means we can now enjoy true and lasting peace with God all because of what the Lord Jesus, the anointed one, has done for us. I thought that was awesome, man, that we have forever, everlasting peace with God because of what Jesus did. Mm -hmm. You know, and and like like the whole thing, if you could see this boiled down, okay, he's talking about boiling down maple syrup, right? (laughs) If you can see this boiled down, the entire Bible from Adam to Jesus was God lost his children. And he wanted them back. That's right. He wanted them back. And that's why Jesus came. Yeah. The whole thing. God wanted his family back. I think that's amazing. Mm-hmm. It is amazing. Anyway. Yep. That's it for tonight. I know I <laughs> get a little long winded, but No, we do sometimes on that. But I mean it's it's, it's just we're, we're passionate about we're it. We're passionate about yeah. it. Yeah. You know, I mean you just like what we talk about the hunting and the fishing and stuff, we're passionate about that. Yes. You know, we're passionate about continuing that hunting heritage with our youth and, you know, the the upbringing of our kids. I mean, we've got to continue that because if we don't, it's going to fall and yeah. it won't be no more. That's right. So that's one reason why we tried to include a little bit of the everything in there. But uh, Yeah, yeah, that's right. We've got, uh, we've got a little announcement this evening. So we are partnering with Highland Outfitters, LLC. Mm. They're located in Highland, Wyoming, 50 miles west of Casper, Wyoming. Cool. Um, location in central Wyoming gives them access to some of the best hunting areas in that state. Uh, they hunt elk, antelope, mule deer, uh, they have a main camp along with uh, another antelope camp in the, uh, southern Wyoming. And on occasion, they also use um, a spike camp is what they call it, consisting of tents and, you know, campers and things. But um, just wanted to mention them. You know, we're going to be doing an ad for them. That ad, You'll hear that ad running, const- or, you know, not constantly, but... It, it'll be put yes, in our rotation. it'll be put in rotation. That's good. So, yeah. over the past few seasons, it's Highland excellent. Outfitters have um, boasted about some of their repeat clientele. Over 70% of those businesses um, have came back and one species or trying, you know, they come back trying one species or trying another one. Uh, and they've shot, you know, triple crowns within Wyoming. Oh, my gosh. Um, antelope, elk, and mule deer. Okay. So that's all the things that they have to hunt there. But they also have leases in Texas where you can hunt Rios. And they have, they just acquired some property, I believe, in Wyoming um, for a lease for Merriam's. Okay. So there's there's turkey hunting there. And they also yeah, right. do some turkey hunting in Florida as well. So they, And they also, ha- they also have African hunts. They do a lot of things over in Africa. Oh, wow. Yeah. So they have be a lot of fun. They have a lot of different things, so we're going to yeah. compile an ad for them, and Good. we'll have that ready within the next week or so.
So I just wanted to put that out there and mention that. But you can go ahead and excellent roll that beautiful roll that beautiful bean <laughs> footage. <laughs> That's right. All right, guys. So thank you all for listening tonight, and Paul, thank you for coming on. Right. Thank you, thank Paul. Thank you guys for having me. Thank we, you. we sure appreciate it. We hope you enjoyed yourself. Was this your yes. first podcast? First broadcast. First oh podcast. yes, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. So That's great. We hope you had a good time. And, yes. You know, like I said, we really appreciate it. We had an amazing time trying some of those great products you have. Folks, if you haven't tried these products, get in contact with Rock Family Farms mm-hmm. and get these products in your kitchen. Yes. Especially if you like pancakes. I mean. <laughs> and who don't like pancakes? Who don't like pancakes? <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> All right, guys. Oh, well, thanks for listening. Be sure to check us out on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and we're on about 18 other different networks. So wherever you get your podcasts, we're there. We appreciate everybody listening tonight. Have a good evening. Thanks, y'all. This episode of On the Limb with Nature's Voice Game Calls is brought to you by Ghost 802, a sports team based in Vermont. Their goal is to promote safe and ethical hunting and to raise the youth to share the same passion for the archery, hunting, and the outdoors as they did growing up. For more information, check them out on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Let them know that you heard about them right here on the Limb with Nature's Voice Game Calls.